was a couple hours ago. Yeah. The message said 430. It was a fatality. 430. A, a semi hit a Jeep, I think. Wow. And then there's a grass fire. There's always grass fires. Along with the <laughs> accident. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, as caused a, by eighth graders? No, caused, no. caused by the accident. <laughs> Still worse. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Unless an eighth grader is driving one of the cars. Hey Patrick, I, I don't know if you saw the email about the, the tennis courts. It's, what's happening there? I did, and we'll, we'll chat about it as a group. Okay. But oh, sounds good. I've got an update for you. Okay, good. Corbin's gone, right? Right. Cor uh, yeah, we're just waiting on Kelly. Because yeah. Susan and Corbin are not here. That's the idea, yeah. Like these are oh, showcase tournaments. She has oh yeah, that's that's totally Thursday the fourteenth. I mean, we're I moving it up a week earlier anyway, so it's like we're not and we're not gonna have it in this room. It, it'll be probably at Old Chicago, or I don't know if we do it at that Italian place again. But, um, so we can have it pretty much whenever. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And she's sitting there going, at least I'm playing soccer. Yeah. At least I'm doing something. I'm not missing any practice during the week. Did you have a chance to look at the work plan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's pretty standard. Yeah, there's not, I mean, it's, it's mostly, it's carryover from, from this past year. Only been to Vegas once, and it was a soccer tournament. Right. Pathetic. Yeah, I looked at it. It's right across the street. I've only been once. I know I got never interested in going, but actually I enjoyed a couple of hours that we sneak out and we went to the desert. I love that. So you don't have to go on. Not better than a month ago. Yeah. It's really slow. Oh, yeah. It's really slow healing. Yeah, this is the one I broke without the plate. Yeah, it's an injured one. Yeah. Takes forever. We're wearing matching hoodies. <laughs> you and me. It's the tis the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have a. No, you don't have a matching oh, sling. That would be okay. weird. Uh, <laughs> 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 I let you have the. That would be, the that only would be one. strange. Yeah, I was on my bicycle and then I wasn't. That's what I keep telling people. So it's <laughs> basically how it went down. <laughs> okay. well, was the bike's fault? No, oh. no. I was trying to make eye contact with a. Uh, guy in a big pickup truck to make sure he didn't pull out and hit me and he did not pull out and hit me but as That's I was as I was trying to like he's like a quad cap <laughs> yeah no I was like you know he was looking in the opposite direction and then I was so focused on trying to make eye contact with him that I misjudged and I went up on the curb and I was going really fast and I had a trailer and I just it's called off-roading it was good <laughs> yeah that's what you get for trying to be safe. I know. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's what I get for trying to be safe. No, no Eduardo tonight? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It was. No Eduardo here to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I heard he'd come here after last night. So. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, no public here um, for comments, so... Actually, could I make a comment? Um, I guess it's sure. a sort of a public comment. There's a couple of people that approach me with uh, a couple of items that maybe is considered a public comment, maybe? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I had um, uh, two friends and, uh, and, and a person that I know that um, came to me um, with a complaint uh, about the swimming team using the pool and um, actually apparently I think it was the last the party or for the end of the season or something like that um, anyway there was a party in the pool um, uh, one of the pe persons uh, showed me the recording <laughs> in her phone from her house of the music that they were playing mm -hmm. so she could hear it from her house and actually the music was very inappropriate I can tell you that if my teenagers were listening to that I would have been um, talking to them, and I think in a neighborhood and out loud sounds uh, pretty bad. Uh, so th that's one of the things that um, I want to leave for the record. So maybe when we, when you negotiate with the swimming team or whatever, you ha take that into account. And uh, another person um, was complaining um, that um, one of the days the pool was closed, the swimming team was not swimming, but the coach was using the pool with her family. So I guess somehow, anyway, um, those are the two things. I think they talked to, I think somehow they talked to you. Um, and, and also I think they talked to the, I think it's, I don't know if it's the president, the chairman or something of the flyers. So, um, but anyway, I'll just leave it for the record so, so we know. So we, um, we received the same calls. We actually dispatched them. Okay. On the noise one, um, but uh, we met with the flyers board. We'll <laughs> bring the agreement forward before the board next year. It's typically not something that is in a board meeting. But okay. The residents requested, okay. so I think we'll bring it forward. And uh, it's the afternoon master swim program that was. I mean, the music was completely loud. actually call this somebody called the police about the coach in the pool with their family and we just told her that they had to get out that's not what the use was for. Mm -hmm. But yeah I think that we'll end up looking at that a little bit closer because um, I, I believe that they contacted the mayor as well and I, I yeah. don't know how so, yeah, we I were, went <laughs> It was a, uh, it was, it was an issue. That's for sure. We weren't, mm -hmm. we weren't okay. happy at all to have to yeah. deal with that. It was it two more days left in the pool, so you know, the pretty costly mistake. But only a couple of days left. So, yeah, not good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thanks for bringing okay. that up. That's fun. you know, people approach me as if I had any. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that's good to know. Anything else? Mm, that should do. Mm. Okay. Um, so we're just going to move straight ahead to the um, work plan for next year. Uh, I'm now forgetting if uh, did I send this to the whole committee already, or is, has everyone seen this? I'm totally spacing. Mm. All right. So we'll just now. pull it up. Um, I should have done that beforehand. No, I'm realizing, I'm realizing maybe I didn't. I don't know. I think I just sent it to you and Patrick. <laughs> Yeah, I don't actually remember. All right. So, largely, this work plan is a carryover from yeah, just, uh, um, from last year, uh, yeah. with you know just a lot of the yeah. more general items because <coughs> we didn't really complete anything big last year. I mean the. Um, Wildflower Park was completed, you know, before that wasn't anything that was on the work plan for last year, and we don't really have anything new coming up for next year that we haven't already been talking about. So, um, you know, the, the the big item still being basically Rec Center. There's the um, South Pole Skate Park, but for the most part, it's there, it's just carryover items. There's, we're not really adding anything, with the exception of we'll look at this whole Riverbend Park playground idea that, that 
um, Ken Lish, chair of OSAC, has brought to us has been talked about a few times before. But um, you know that was the, you know the board's aware of that now, so we'll we'll take another look at it. Um, probably in the what did I put it in the second quarter, I think. Um, but other than that, if, if you want to just read through it. <coughs> If anyone can think of items not on the work plan that, that we should add, you know, whether it's a personal item of yours that you think we should consider or something that maybe I missed, um, or if there's items on here you think that we really shouldn't be talking about it, I mean, make your opinions known. And just to clarify too, we typically front load certain things about budget analysis and making sure that if we want budget recommendations, they're put in early. Because if we get into the third or fourth quarter, they miss the budget recommendations. Well, the right. There, there's a number of things on here that are that are definitely time sensitive, and that's why stuff gets front, front loaded to the first, you know, half of the year. Um, because you know, one is the budget, like Corey's saying. I mean, that basically we need to have that done by like June-ish, in order for it to start being considered in the in the budgets. Um, same with you know, amenity priority list we take care of pretty quickly, um, and then there's a, a number of other items that again we have to get done in the first half of the year. Um, the one item on here that's still left in the fourth quarter, we're going to talk about this a little bit later but the the master plan we really need to figure that out and and that will potentially get moved up too but right now it's left in the fourth quarter and then the ongoing are just as as we see or get directed correct ongoing is stuff that I expect will probably come up, or at least we have, it's in our kind of purview to come up, but it's not stuff that we necessarily have to address if, if we're not asked to look at it, and or it could come up at any point in the year. Mm -hmm. it, it's not necessarily something that we can easily say, oh, this is gonna happen in the third quarter. It could happen in every quarter, you know, re like certain things like town center. That stuff could come up at any point in the year. I don't see it on there, but um, it is tentatively in the 2018 budget for pickleball courts. And I don't see it anywhere, so you may want to add something. I mean, it's on there just like um, the skate park skate improvements park. are. Uh, okay. Well, South Pool Skate Park. So you probably want to put some sort of civic engagement on pickleball courts. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to, the budget isn't approved yet, but it's in the preliminary budget right now. And we're going to continue a discussion about that after. Right, plan, we're going right? to specifically yeah. talk about this again. So then we can maybe shift it around where it needs to be. I'm going to drive in the second quarter right now. But okay. Is the... Um, did you say second quarter? Right now, I'm tentatively going to put it second quarter. Is the town center park parcel and civic space, is that um, a reference to the community center? Well, so, yes. I mean, the park parcel, that applies to any of the park parcels and civic spaces namely um, the well not the, the specifically the sports stable partnership but the other civic space that we've talked about in town center the there is an item on here regarding con conduct in the first quarter conduct community engagement on recreation center needs and potential ballot initiative I would say the partnership w would fall under that discussion as well as potentially the the town 15 parcel and the, the larger ballot question. I mean, either one of them would be rec center needs. Okay, cool, thanks. Patrick? 
Patrick, the the street naming process for town center. I mean, is that done? I mean, that never came to us like I thought it was supposed to. Should we just ax that and just say park naming? So we've officially removed the slide, the rattlesnake slide. <laughs> Apparently, we don't okay. we don't discuss it anymore, John. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Here, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Got it. Oh, I forgot to put my sunglasses. What were we talking about? <laughs> That's all approved. I mean, that has right. FTPs and everything. Yeah, that one's approved. But uh, Park Three, Central Park, we need to have you guys review the concept um, that the developer supplies, and that's just kind of very brief history on it. Is is if um, if we chose the park configuration and the amenities with the developer, they would cover eighty percent of the cost. Yeah. Cover 20. Okay, that's how that kind of whole thing came about. When we get it, well, I've got kind of the whole history on it, um, but it was, it was contentious when we went over it. So, 2014 or 15, and it's, I think it'll come back here probably pretty quick. Do you expect, how do you expect that process to go then? Do you think they're going to come to us with the design? Yeah, yeah I think they'll come to us with the design. And okay. You, you guys kind of vote. Okay. How quickly? I think I think first uh, quarter, third quarter, first quarter, first quarter. Yeah. 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 So is that should we just kind of put a tentative if that comes up, or do we is that captured under the civic space? I would say it's captured yeah. under number two of the ongoing. Okay. Unless you think we need to specifically identify it. I mean, same thing with. Um, is the CTF money for playground improvement that thirty five thousand <coughs> that's like gone still from yeah. the budget, right? Yeah. So if we have any playground improvements that we would like to see, that's just gonna fall under the budget recommendation process, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to specifically identify right. that because it's just gonna fall under budget. Yep. I'd say the other one this um continue to review options for a trail connection to Davidson Mace underpass. I know this is specific to Marshall, but they'll start that trail construction next year. So I don't, you know, there may be an opportunity to continue to work on, on the Marshall Road connection. So I think that one's still totally applicable. And you're talking about the Dr. Cog The Dr. Trail. Cog Trail, yeah. Where does that stand? Because weren't they supposed to do the the survey and everything this year? Yeah, I, don't, I think uh, Public Works has maybe even got a, I know that they went out to, to bid, I just, I don't know exactly where they are in the process. Um, so you think they have a design? You know, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay. And it, that's just, as a quick reference, that's kind of the McCaslin underpass, straight along 36 to the Marshall underpass. Mm -hmm. And what are they looking to do to it? What's that? What are, I mean, what are the... So, we've always talked about as a group, you've got that Davidson Mesa underpass, which kicks you out onto Marshall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
it's kind of a precarious location. It is, yeah. yeah I've been so out many times. Yeah. How do we, is there an opportunity to work with the state since it's a state highway to do signage or a ped crossing or oh, cool. uh, something? Oh, cool. Okay. Great. Or something or, yeah. or uh, something so you're not a wider, you know, maybe it's like a, a more defined bike lane going west down Marshall or, <coughs> you know, something. Yeah. We, we, I'd have to go back. We even discussed that there should be a traffic light considered right. at 76 and Marshall so that anyone going from like the original town area down 76, that's right, 76, right, mm -hmm. would be able to cross there. And then this Dr. Cog Trail, which which we just referred to, which if you're not aware of, mm -hmm. is, there is a grant for a trail to be built from like the park and ride yeah. up the on that north side of Marshall Road up to Davidson. It's okay. an underpass in between Marshall and 36. Yeah, yeah, in between. Yeah. The, so if if you could just safely get across Marshall, there will then be a bike path <clears throat> for you to take. That would be cool. Uh, uh, from from yeah. there, but it's the matter of you still have to cross Marshall. To yeah, you still have to get there. Yeah. So unless you're going to cross at like all the way down at the marketplace, like Which you know where no like the, yeah. where the Panda Express is, mm -hmm. like where there is a pedestrian crossing, if, unless you're going to go all the way down there to cross to the north side, yeah, you have no other spot to, right. so you're basically jaywalking across Marshall to get there. Yeah, I've done that a lot. <laughs> I'm, it's not where my accident was, though, so it's all good. <laughs> it was in Louisville. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there's, there's been a lot of discussion about that tunnel. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of oh, yeah. We, we just pass by, yeah. yeah. This committee was raising red flags on it well before it was even constructed. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. I was just going to comment that you guys might want to take a look at um, OSAC's uh, meeting recording from their last meeting. They had extensive discussion on their work plan, and um, as the liaison for ProStack, I think there's some overlap there, and I know the board gave the two committees pretty strong direction that you needed to look carefully at the items where there was um, overlap. So you may want to watch that tape just to so, so get I a sense of... I've already of had a discussion with Ken. Okay. They didn't have a work plan that, like, the draft that he felt could be passed on to us yet to discuss. But you can watch the video. Okay, but... but and I would recommend that you do and so. And I to discuss overlap items, but we're already planning we were hoping to have done that before tonight, but they didn't get apparently far enough. Um, but we're aware that that there's over there's potential overlap items. However, I feel like if it comes down to the committees this having to decide what is in each other's purview, that shouldn't be decided by the committees. That needs to be decided by the board. So the board needs to really, when you get OSAC and ProSAC's work plans, look at it very closely and, and you should be the ones determining whether or not an item belongs with one committee or the other. The comment I will make to you is that the level of knowledge that various trustees have on the two committees is not the same. So I'll, I'll just make the caution one more time. If you have time to, to watch the video, um, you may want to do so just to get some insight into what they were thinking. Okay, understood. Well, I guess I'm going to go back to a couple items on here. With that being said, we have our amenity priority list that we always review. And I don't even know where that is. It's my first quarter. Yeah, somewhere. first quarter, I think. It's in there. Number one, I think. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> it is number one. That's why I'm reading from too far down the list. <laughs> So, Thank you, sir. Be, you know, top list every year. Remember, I forgot about the American Priorities list until like March of this year because it also got lost at the top of the list. It got lost. <laughs> anyway, I was I was just gonna point out, I was just gonna point out the amenities priority list. We touch base on a lot of recreation opportunities, the development of parks, development of trails. You know, there's various things. But then I think one of the key things that we probably have, that we always seem to overlap is the five-year trail plan, which to me, part of the five-year trail plan, there is priorities of amenities that are specific trails, but then the trails plan is just a larger list of trails. And we also had expedited trails that 
two years ago that still haven't been built. Hmm. And there's new trails that have been built since then that were never on any list. So there's different priorities that, you know, for me, I feel we need to get ahead of and make sure we refine our amenity list to include some of the trails or trails that we think are priorities and then have a list of trails that at the second, you know, as a follow-up, that if there's additional money for trails, that there is that development. But for me, I, I just want to make sure we fully understand, you know, amenities throughout parks and, and interconnectivities within the town and, and within developed space versus, I know that we talk a lot about some of the trails that are in the open space, but it's Boulder County, and to me that's not really within a park, and we don't really have full control of it, we can recommend it, um, but I think that's more potentially for, that's where you still, you may talk about trails in both pro stack and OSTAC, mm -hmm. but they aren't the same trails for me. You know, I think there's still a recommendation that I, I feel strongly about some of the trails, no matter where they are in the interconnectivity, but if they're out in the open space that we, even as a town of Superior, don't control, maybe that's you know where we draw the line with how you separate some of those things. But they're going to probably show up on both plans. Well, and you know, open space and trails both still are in the purview of ProStack. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm, until that is changed, which I really hope it isn't, then. It, there's no way that you can remove trails from from ProStack. Does that mean that OSAC doesn't also get to talk about trails? No, I'm not saying that. But you're always going to have, there's going to be some overlap items where you can't help but have overlap. I mean, you can't say that one committee is responsible for, for open space or one committee is responsible for trails because at this point, well, if anything, trails really are not in the purview directly of OSAC unless they are a natural open space. Right. So that, I mean, unless you're going to start nitpicking over the de that type of definition, I would say we're going to continue to have overlap on the five-year trails plan, on the county open space and trails recommendations. That, that That's not going to be in the hands of one committee. It's going to, that's going to be a joint effort. Is it a joint effort though? I mean, I, I, I know that it wasn't this on last month where the board was looking at potentially making the two committees one committee. I don't, I'm assuming that did not happen since we're having this conversation, no, but I mean, you know, obviously there, I, I think that the concern is that we're sort of watering down either recommendation because, because now they have two recommendations on the same thing. And, you know. Well, no, actually, the last two years, we've made an effort to do a joint recommendation, so they're not receiving two recommendations on the same thing. They just get right. one. But we they have two committees one. working on the same stuff. So, the, like, if you remember yeah. that this year when we did the trails, I remember um, we, we did an, a, a priority list mm -hmm. like we did with the amenities mm -hmm. priority list. And so it was a mathematical calculation right. that we did. OSAC did the exact same thing, and then we combined those two, so we had you know an 18-member mathematical calculation. Right. And that's how we came up with a list. And so yes, I mean, the list that ProSAC had differed somewhat from the joint list, and we discussed that mm -hmm. as a committee, and we did make a recommendation that diverged a little bit from OSAC's. Uh, or from the joint list yeah. at least, but as far as I'm aware, it still went as one recommendation to the board. They didn't get two separate, did they? No, I think there have been years where we do, where they've been separate. Prior to two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, they'll do like a, a, a and an A1, you know, and then <laughs> the board's got it. Figured out. Like, yeah. So, I mean, that's still a little bit of a working process because we've only gone through it twice. And this year's process was different than last year's process. Yeah. And then the, the issue with the expedited trails plan um, is they, they weren't necessarily open space trails, but they were trails that could potentially connect to open space. 
I think both committees agreed upon the list, but then um, we had some pushback from some residents on a couple of the locations, and then one of the trails, I mean, the construction cost was, you know, like one one point five million dollars, <laughs> which was like an absolute non starter. We only had like eight hundred for the entire mm -hmm. list. So uh, all said and done, I mean, two two of the trails faced public pushback. One was crazy expensive, you know, and then we were able to build one, you know. So and then one cool. other being the one Coyote Ridge, and then we are hoping Ridge. to combine with the slide. Yeah. Now the right. slide's basically dead. We will probably want to discuss that one again next year, but that one being <laughs> basically a single track type trail could largely be built with volunteer labor. Um, so we we might still be able to tackle that next year without really any budget. Yeah. I mean, it's been, you have the design, right? Mm -hmm. From, mm -hmm. I can't remember their name. Mm -hmm. um, but this larger trails question going forward is if we expect any trails to get built, I mean, we're basically going to have to include that in our budget recommendations. So like when we talk about budget recommendations, we're going to have to say, look, if there's a specific or a few specific trails we want to get built, then we need to consider making that one of our budget recommendations. Because otherwise, these things keep moving forward without any type of monies to, be, to build them. Right. So until, until the board assigns them a specific spot in a year's budget, they're not going to get built. We're going to continue to have the same discussion. And, and that's why, to me, it, it seems like the amenities list is the key focal point where it combines everything within the town as a, uh, from a parks and recreation, open space trails recommendation into one amenity and says, here's our list of hot items, and here's the top three, and are these three that we can get budgeted this year? And can we look at that next year and say, okay, we're getting <clears throat> the skate park, a pickleball court, so those amenities mm -hmm. can come off the list. But this trail is one that's, you know, this segment of trail is one that's needed. Can we get that? You know, those type of things that it may be part of a bigger list of all trails, but that still may make it into a key that amenity top, yeah. that we want to try and fund. And we have to adjust that and adjust how we right. propose that to the board. And, and one reason why OSAC has been more involved with trails as of late is because of the open space tax and the, the fund. The fund. And the, the idea that, well, if it's a trail, it's, it, the town's going to build it out of the open space fund and not out of the general budget. And because OSAC has largely taken control of the open space fund, which I will say is a debatable issue, whether they really <laughs> have control over the open space fund. But because they they have really focused on that, like they their recommendation is is necessary essentially to spend out of the open space fund, they have therefore really gotten involved in the trails discussions. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but again, like Corey kind of said, or Patrick kind of said, these trails are not open space trails. They may lead to open space, and that might have been the reason why OSAC was in favor of some open space fund being built or used to build the trails along the castle because they were leading to like the Colton Trailhead, for example. But they are not on open space, and so you get again into this debate of well, who's really responsible? Which committee is really responsible for that trail? And if it's not on open space is there going to be kickback on whether or not it is built with open space fund dollars. Um, so that would be another thing is if we make a recommendation for trails to be built, are we making a recommendation that the, come out of the general budget, like as if we were making a recommendation for like a playground improvement? Mm -hmm. Or are we making a recommendation that it be spent out of open space fund? This committee, to my knowledge, has never actually recommended that anything be built using open space fund dollars. We just make a budget recommendation and then the board decides where it's going to come from within the budget. 
That's, you're correct. <clears throat> So, I would, I would, if you want to start talking about this. Yeah, I was going to say back to I got a, uh, the one thing that keeps popping out of me is we continue to discuss pickle board, pickle ball courts <laughs> that we may, it kind of goes hand in hand with tennis. And I don't understand if we maybe, I, 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 I feel that there may be a need to add that to the, somewhere on here. Do we need to have that, or is that just part of the amenities? list for the well yeah I mean at this point pickleball is being identified because the board has put it in the budget right mm -hmm. so that's why it's identified on its own I would say yeah I mean tennis which we have had standalone discussions on yep. is really at this point is more of a general amenity item okay so it's when we talk about the amenities priority list when we talk about budget recommendations it's going to fall under that umbrella. Yeah, that's the only thing that pops Whether out of my head. Whether we need to have a yeah. specific item dedicated mm -hmm. to tennis, we can have that discussion. But we did just talk about tennis specifically, mm -hmm. right. like a couple months ago. Right. Um, so I don't know what we would be doing that's new from what we've already done. At this point, t tennis courts are really more of a location issue is you know we it's on the amenities priority list we know that we would like to see more tennis courts in town where can we build them right <clears throat> and i was just throwing out there as a thought process with the pickleball court is there a combination factor is there a better way to sell it is pickleball can you play can you you can line them technically yeah the use the feedback we get is the use is different you right. know we one of the ideas you come up with is, you know, you do maybe a couple courts side by side. Because to Peter's point about the location, is it's likely wherever, you know, you had a big enough location, you could probably do a standalone pickleball court, a standalone tennis court, and maybe try to have them in the same area and take advantage of some kind of Parking, parking or something. Shared parking or try to get the same contractor to do it. Um, and, you know, deal with some economies of scale. But yeah, because I think yeah. tennis was seven on the priority list and pickleball was ten. Yeah. You know, so is there, uh, we, we've heard, you know, the ongoing conversations about needing tennis courts. So, we do. you know, is there, a, is there some opportunity in there? But then, you know, the idea of combining them, I mean, I, I wasn't here for the discussion last month. We're going to essentially have discussion again next yeah. the, on the yeah, agenda item. But it, the, the other thing I know you brought up, Naria, was the, the sound of the pickleball that you don't want to be playing tennis next to the pickleball. So even mm -hmm. if we had an opportunity to put a tennis court next to a pickleball court, is, is that even the best idea? It may not be the best idea, but I have to tell you, considering how <laughs> how difficult it is to get the tennis court these days in Superior. It may be better than not having the, mm -hmm. the okay. tennis court, so yeah. it might be open to discussion. Uh, but yes, it's not ideal. <laughs> and so number eight up there, the community engagement on rec center, that's kind of the thought process of either in impact or by itself or standalone or right that that kind of encompasses all of it i, I see it as encompassing okay. anything rec center so yeah. it yeah. could be the partnership it could be the town 15 or what other you know ideas someone comes up with between now and then right. so, so we haven't made a decision on well and the board what? hasn't approved the budget yet um so we don't know if they're going to approve the hundred thousand we requested to to move towards the a ballot initiative i mean that's a that's also a larger question of does the board want to move towards a ballot initiative we still don't have a definitive answer from the board on that and I i'll have assume a, what's that i'll have an update okay for you guys i mean i would assume if they approve the our budget request that means they're they're okay with us moving towards a ballot initiative next year. So, but there is seventy-five thousand dollars in the budget right now for rec center community process, but mm -hmm. the so, bu so again, the budget's what? not, and that's not in yellow. That's in 
that was in the original budget and was not taken out. Really that does not mean it will not be taken out in right. 10 days. We, we, so we as a, so as until a committee, we, we'll definitely be looking at the, re, the rec center and what to do with yeah, it. I'm just trying to find these forward. Yeah, I'm just trying to find things we might have missed. That, that just, that's right. all, yeah. yeah. Kind of focusing on just trying to say, okay, what, what else would you put on here? Because I think from our amenities list, we have the skate park, the rec center. Right. What was three? Multi-purpose fields. Oh, yeah. You get into fields, fields after those two, but but those two were the two key things that were potential budget items that are potentially going to drive us in the first quarter of right. next year to really solidify what they are and hopefully get those constructed or a process moving forward. And then at that point, that's where we come back to the amenity list to solidify. Hey, what other things do we think are critical for the next year and potentially set up for budget items later on? And pickleball is in the middle with a new budget piece that's thrown in there that we need to do some community engagement, find a location, solidify what's the best place, if tennis can be with it, you know, that kind of stuff. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. seems like, I don't know, it seems to me like it's in the right order. Of course, I always fall off in third or fourth quarter because it's kind of continuation <laughs> stuff. Yeah, the, the, the ongoing ones sometimes are more important than the third and fourth quarter. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, unless we have a big ongoing project, the third and fourth quarter tend to be pretty late, as it's you've kind of seen this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we haven't, we've had a couple short meetings. We haven't had a lot of large items because right now, the rec center, we've kind of hit the pause button on that until we get, you know, further direction. And we don't have anything else really big. Yeah. Uh, other than that, so because I mean, we've largely dealt with parks one and two, they'll probably come back to us again if they make enough changes. I would think to the design, it might come back to us, but because that FDP was not approved, right? The FDP for part it was approved just oh, without the approved. without the restroom and without the concession building. So, so how did they approve Park One if they don't know whether they're going to sell off part of the parcel? So. Right, so if they, so if they decide to sell it off, you would just go back and amend the FTP. Okay. So and that bond would go away. But yeah, you're you're right. I mean, that's that's a discussion that's going to come up with the board. Okay. Um, Patrick, can you just go down to the ongoing? Uh huh. The the remove item. We don't actually want to remove that whole line. We just want to just remove end adjoining maybe. street. Because we still want to have park naming process. Okay. So it's just those three words we need to remove and adjoining street. As a trustee, I'd just like to ask where ProStac um, believes it is on the 2005 Prost Master Plan update, whatever it is. It, it did come up the other night in the OSAC meeting, um, and Trustee Pennington said, who's doing that? Who's leading that? She acted, I don't think she even was aware that it was going on. So um, In the OSAC meeting? It did come up well, in the OSAC I mean, meeting. Um, and so I would just like to encourage you, if you're, if you're working on that, that might be something that you want to do earlier in the year and come to the board with a report on anything that's glaring or anything like that. So I'll, I'll just say, it, it, I mean, I've looked at it extensively for a while. Peter's looked at it as well. We've, we've gone over it. And I know um, from talking to Ken, when Peter and I met with Ken at one point, OSAC is redoing a section within there on just the open space, and there is yeah. a, a big section with a bunch of attachments and even how to how to pick what's good uh, open space and how to maintain it and what's good vegetation and what's worthwhile as open space and what's not type of thing. There's all kinds of stuff in there, but there's a lot of stuff in there on just history of 
you know, Founders Park and what they should develop and what open space is out there. So there's a lot of just cleanup in there. So it's really a matter of going through and just filtering it all out. And OSAC, I think, is just doing a piece. And yeah. even when we've looked at it, I think there's certain elements within there that we can clean up as a, you know, as a ProStat committee, but there's certain elements that we will not be able to touch because there's just, uh, I don't know, demographics and lots of updates of things mm -hmm. like that where you can put in your last demographic information. I, I, I've already started doing that. Yeah. But, yeah, I, mean, know, but I, mean, just, so. I think my comment on it would be is if there's things in there that were recommendations or that were plans that are glaring that we still aren't addressing, um, you know, you may want to use that as a tool for talking to the board, you know. I mean, I, I'm just saying. So, so it, it's it's now a 12 year old document, and next right, year it'll be a 13 year old document. Mm -hmm. Is it still viable? Um, are there yeah. things that are uh, glaring in there that we should be doing that we shouldn't be doing? Because that is the sort of long range uh, direction for uh, Parks and Rec. And so, if you guys have things that you're concerned about that are in there. So I'm just saying you're, sp I, you're supposed to be the ones who give us yeah. guidance and advise us, so. So I had said when we first pulled up the work plan, the one, the one item I didn't really know whether it should be moved up is this prose master plan. So potentially that needs to move from the fourth quarter further up. The, and we were gonna talk about this in the updates of kind of where we're at, but one thing I think we need is at the beginning of next year, we, we kind of had a working group, it was basically Corey and me, to work on this this year. It's overwhelming, to mm -hmm. say the least. And so- That's why consultants normally do it. We, we <laughs> need yeah. to decide, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. we need to decide hours. how far we can really take it on our own before it just needs to have a consultant hired to do it. Because I've already spent hours mm -hmm. trying to update like just like the demographics, the like it has descriptions of like all the committees under the parks mm -hmm. department, has like all this stuff that's just is changed. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um since two thousand five. There's you know, there's stuff that's been completed that can be removed, you know, like projects, parks and stuff that have been completed that can be removed. Um I spent hours and hours, I don't think I even got like through the first ten pages of editing this mm -hmm. document. And it's, I don't know how many. Like, we how added it as a budget. At, at one point, we had talked about having it as a, I think yeah. we got a, a quote from Greenplay around 65 or 70,000 to update it. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. it does seem ridiculous, but at the same time, it is a lot of work. Yeah. Um, the OSAC piece, they are supposed to be working on that change. Uh, they were supposed to be updating their, you know, open space like uh, um, priorities or whatever for acquisition. Um, I'm, not, I, I'm not even ready to say that we're just gonna drop that thing into the master plan without editing it ourselves. I mean, that, that is a document that doesn't necessarily have to be completed by OSAC. It could be completed by a consultant. It could be completed by us, I don't know. We'll see what OSAC submits when they're done with it. Typically. Um, but that is yeah. just one piece at this I'll, point. I'll just of say the, out of the 100 or 230 pages or so, there's six pages of open space. There are the recommend analysis and recommendations for natural open space. It's a six page segment. And there's other spaces where there's recommendation for open space, a page re uh, executive summary. There's, there's different breakdowns. So it's a couple pages here and there throughout the document. But I mean, overall, yeah. You spend a lot of time, and I know Ken spent a lot of time just cleaning out open space information because mm. there's a lot of that's not any open space. There's like 13 or 15 properties, and I think they're down to like five. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. something like that. And so half of those are in the works. That's definitely something that we're going to have to talk about as a bu possible budget recommendation of whether we just this needs to be handed off because yes. Technically, ProStack has been working on this for at least, what, the last year? It might have even been on last year's work plan. But we've been, it's been inactive. We haven't gotten very far on it. Um, just because it's it's almost a document you have to wonder, do you just 
start work from over. scratch, start yeah. over. Because I mean, what I've you know what I've been doing is is just work, trying to edit the existing document, and it's like I'm seriously like just eighty that. percent of yeah. it's just deleted and I'm rewriting it. Just, there are some municipalities that are just going to two year strategic plans because by the time you realistically get things budgeted and built, you know, your your master plan's already outdated by the time you get through your first well, project. So it, it there's even a, been a shift in yeah. it's a in little bit of a question of whether works. the document is just yeah, is it too much? Is yeah. it necessary to have that much of a document? Well, and, and I think more than anything, there's a lot of extra stuff in here and recommendations about how to move forward on things where it's always going to be a recommendation. You also have all your local amenities and your different uh, recreation opportunities nearby, whether it's Splash in Broomfield or mm -hmm. you know, whatever. It's, it's all these little parks nearby that there's phone numbers and contacts and all kinds of stuff. And you're like, you really need all that? Um, you know, and, but there is things in here that say, yeah, exactly, you have to skim through it all. <laughs> before you get totally overwhelmed but but there's but there's all kinds of information in there and a lot of it just comes down to for me it, it was going through and saying you know you need a you need a basketball court for every thousand houses or you need a you know baseball field for every thousand you know whatever there's like different ratios of number of people to number of facilities and then of course from there you go and say does your community have a active recreation program that fully engages baseball and are utilizing the fields or are you using more soccer fields or more you know lacrosse you know there's all the different what other utilization do you have and is your utilization in your fields full so that's where you go into what's our priorities and our amenities and that's where I think the West Field came in and the fact that it's being heavily used but it's never intended for right. a lot of kids being out there at six eight in the morning with wet feet in the playing soccer or football yeah. or whatever so but on the other hand, if there's some of these other amenities are coming in in park one and two, that's replacing some of that and maybe some of that can shift, but all that is out there and it's just what's the recommendation, what's the priority. But I mean, going through it all, you can see those type of recommendations and then you also see the, you know, we want a pool, we want this, we want that. You can see all the things that were recommended for Founders Park and 90% of it got in included in there. And there's only a few things that were left off of that that still were outstanding. And some of those things are like the skate park mm -hmm. and pickleball. You know, some of that is still, I don't think pickleball was well, that's the thing. in here. It's like not even it's, a, it was not, it wasn't even a sport, not even a sport in 2005. <laughs> but, but I think the skate park was uh, mentioned in here. So, I, you know, I haven't gone back and looked at all those. But yeah. it's just enlightening to go through it. And more than anything, for me, it's just purging out what isn't viable anymore. Mm -hmm. But then to re-update some of the analytics is, you know, some of it's still valid. It's just baseline information. So, but yeah, demographics and some of the other stuff is, yeah. Well, yeah, there was some it. stuff in there that <laughs> seemed to have been, I don't want to say based on a survey, but it was based on some, yeah. maybe some type of analytic uh, yeah. process. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, I mean, we can't update that unless you had a consultant like redo it, that analysis. I mean, we can't do that as a committee, I don't think. And so are you referring, are you updating the plan but still referring to like that certain data that was done in 2005 or are you hiring someone to collect new data, run your analysis, I don't know. I don't know, I mean at, at this point, I would say that we could bring it up as another, um, task or item for our work plan um, but at this point I, I would say even just going through and deleting out stuff that isn't relevant and then coming back and trying to re you know figure out what we want to add to it and what we want to try and chase That's would be approach. the first step and then even with that I would say that it'd be almost a secondary work session that would be maybe come in an hour before the meeting and try and just run through a little bit more of in depth and just trying to understand it all and then have a normal meeting and maybe the highlights in the normal meeting, something like that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, there's just, there's so much in it, and you, you're gonna get lost in an hour and just trying to get through just an understanding of getting everyone on the group on the same page. And at some, at some point then, we could potentially present that to the board of, here's what, you know, where we are, what that is, and really more of just an update of, you know, these, these are the type of items that were all removed, and this is really what's left. 
because really I think that there's a lot of things that have been accomplished mm -hmm. from what's in here from the 12, 13 years ago. And uh, there's only a few things, and that's where I think some of these are still priorities that just haven't been achieved. Well, and isn't that essentially what you're wanting us to boil it down to? I mean, is is a full is a full on update considering how <clears throat> how, how long this seems that it's going to take, or how much money, or bringing in a consultant or whatever? When it's really just us going through and saying these are the few things that are boiled down that just still haven't been done. That you know, I mean, isn't that kind of what you're wanting us to get at? It's at kind this of point? what you want the purpose of the document to be, because mm -hmm. if you want the document to be to describe like everything, like the um, type of land use. Uh, the, I guess I, the, I meant just all the committees for the town, board like, specifically, like yeah. right now, like what Sandy just. I'm asked just saying for. it's been on your work plan for two years, and most of the board isn't even aware of what work's been done, or if you if you gathered anything like oh we saw a glaring recommendation that we need something you know so right. I guess it's more of a have you done a review of it let the board know give just give them kind of a sense of what it is because it's been on the work plan yeah. and I can maybe you know, work on work so on I would just say maybe I just even, even if it was to, to give a report on we reviewed it yeah. There's a lot of it that's out of date. These are the sort of glaring things that we still see. It just shows that Pro, uh, that ProStack is on top of that plan and that they're paying attention to it and that they want the board to do or not do certain things so, or that they feel like we've right. missed some gaps because the board isn't going to look at that and on a because we rely on ProStack right. to do mm -hmm. that, just like we rely on OSAC to stay on top of their um, governing documents and documents that they've done. So it's up to you guys. I'm just saying if you put it in the fourth quarter, you're not going to do it. And, so, and you know what? I think maybe we should just remove it from the fourth quarter and put it in ongoing um, for now. But what I would say is I'll try to work on it some more between now and January, and we can do an update when we have it the dinner with the board. We'll make that one of our items to discuss is, is the master plan. Yep, that sounds good. I would um, you know, refer you guys to the comp plan in 2012 as well, because I know that had, that had a, a, a recreation and parks component to it. And I don't think that the comp plan by any means supersedes, but it's significantly newer. Yeah, because um, I mean. And there, you know, I think, Corey, to your, to your point, do you, if you have a comp plan that's got some history and some vision and some ideas about the direction of the town established in 2012, you may not need as a robust master plan if it's already covered in another document, you know, because the worst thing is, is when you create a document and the document sits on the shelf. Right. Right. right? And, and that's where right. I feel like some of the language in here and yeah. all the history in here, like, I just skim over. It's it. a reference. It's not a... It's not like a guiding but, principle. <laughs> and if it's obsolete, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's the other piece. Mm -hmm. I think that would be important for you to say to the board, you know what? Mm -hmm. There's just so much in here that's obsolete at this point. Yeah. We're I mean, not really sure that it should be a governing document anymore. I mean, that's just all I'm saying. We refer to it. And if it's really not a current document that's valuable for the town for planning, I mean, that would be my only comment on it. Right. I, I mean, and, and I would say that from the, the master plan, I think that our priorities and, and things that we are continuing to push and ask for budgets on is things that are still established in here. I mean, just going through this one list that has like 26 items, 28 items, I've crossed off 75% of them. Mm -hmm. And outstanding things are things like skate park, tennis courts, Feasibility study for indoor pool, gymnasium, <laughs> basketball, exercise facility, <laughs> indoor community meeting space, outdoor meeting space, gathering. You know, it's like, it's those are the pieces that are in here. Right. Like, we're still talking about them 12 years later. So, I mean, that's yeah. just, you know, the yeah. key list. And you know, a lot of the other stuff is checked off on a lot of the other facilities and proximities to community. I mean, I, I really, if you guys haven't done it, I would look at both documents, but I've got the comp plan open, which is on the town's website. Mm -hmm. And the comp plan 
I mean, it actually accomplishes a lot of, I mean, it talks about the Richmond 15, it talks about the properties along 76, it talks about land use planning and residential goals and trail goals. Um, you know, so maybe there's, maybe there's just an opportunity to fill in the gaps off of the newer document, you know, and you guys aren't redlining info from, you know, 05. But yeah, I, I agree. We've had that thing on the work plan for a while. Yeah, and I don't want to detract from the work. I mean, I know that you all have worked on it, but also it seems like maybe that's not the best use of your time. I don't know. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't say it's not, it's not a, a, it's education. It's not, yeah, it is educational. It's just very boring. Work. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and it's so, it's, sure. it's hard to sit there and do it for more than like an hour or two at a time sure. it, because it's like, it's, it's very daunting. Yeah. So that's why it's like I've you know I'll put a couple hours into it and then I'm like yeah I'm not gonna touch that for another month. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's taken so it's kind of fallen by the wayside. But if <laughs> if I get enough time like around the holidays maybe I'll tackle it more. <laughs> maybe that's the idea behind a master plan. They just make it so giant and daunting that no one will touch it. <laughs> For, I'm telling you, really, years. there's a, there's actually a huge shift in parks and recreation because, I mean, people are starting to find that they're good for two years. Yeah. And by the time you cycle a board or board members, the it's they get outdated so quickly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, they're but, great documents to kind of give you the big picture plan of moving forward. But I will forward. say, as a, as a big picture plan for a developing town, just had a lot of information, but now that a lot of these pieces have been developed out great. with, you know, some of the original town and, and across in downtown now, you know, a lot of the thoughts and pieces about what you want to do are already in place, and there's only a few things left, and some interconnectivity of trails and things like that, right. that it's like, what do you want to still carry off as a town? I will say you were all supposed to have read it before you joined this committee. You're so cute. So <laughs> it's, 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 you're familiar you with know not what, what, what is in there. It's, really it's like quoted really like the dry, Bible, though. right? Yeah. 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 It, it was on the application, I'm pretty sure. I think I have opened it. Look, e even goal number 10.4 in the comp plan, <laughs> ensure all town residents have access to indoor activity space. Aww. Look at that. It goes over natural open space existing open space goes over trails so indoor activity space is costco right now that's basically yeah. that's where yeah. you get the workout <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah or louisville rec center yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay so if we don't have anything else great <laughs> we'll move on from the work plan but um we have these couple changes good start yeah <laughs> Well, actually, do we actually need to vote to to move it forward to the board for approval, or can we just send it? Or do we do we need a? Vote? Well, are you going to wait until you see what happens with OSAX? The problem at this point with that is then we're not actually we're not really going to have a meeting. I guess we could vote on it next month. But we're not ha we're having an informal meeting for December, so we wouldn't actually get to vote on it until January. Is that too late? for the board to be looking at. I've got them right now. I think they're all scheduled for that first meeting in January. Wow. We certainly didn't get them all at the first meeting in January last year. <laughs> that doesn't mean we don't want to have it lined up. I yeah. guess we can vote on it next I mean, I, month. it's Either fine. Month. Me, I... But we're not really going to change it between yeah. now and then. It's a problem unless OSAC right. comes to us after their December meeting and says, we've finalized our work plan, here it is. Can we just send them our finalized work plan and well, say, Well, I already here it sent is. them this. Oh, okay. They had this before their, yeah. okay. before their meeting last week, they had this. This is one of those, I mean, yeah, we can only discuss it as a group. And, yeah. You know, it's not one that we can go over by email. Um, I, don't, I don't know that there's a real specific I know that we have to do the elections by the second meeting. I don't remember if the work plans are also due by the second meeting of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, well we'll leave it for next month. I mean, you can vote on it. I just was asking well, a question. We'll wait That's all. Next <coughs> we, we just need we to make sure we do it then. 
Do you have enough people the next meeting? I guess it would be the thing. Yeah. I guess I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question, Sandy. In, in just looking at the work plan, other than <coughs> trails, are we overlapping on other things? Are you concerned about overlap? I am. Because I mean. So on what? Are you concerned about I'm, I don't think it's my place to say specifically, but I believe there will be overlap. Is it overlap? Do you feel like we should be removing items? No. Okay. I mean, that's what I'm concerned about is the, I'm more, at this point, to be perfectly honest, I see if there's overlap, it's OSAC overlapping with us too much that they need to remove items, not that we need that's just my opinion. I haven't seen their work plan yet. I was hoping to have seen it, but I haven't. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have nothing on here about discussing open space, do we? Yeah, we're not talking it's about open like space that. acquisition. The one. We're not talking about, yeah, yeah, I mean, so. we're barely talking about trails on here other than the things we've always done, which is five-year trails plan and Boulder County recommendations. That's right. totally ours, yeah. Um, and with the exception of Davis and Mesa, that we're not specifically identifying any one trail on here. Um, so it's it's all stuff that we've, it's nothing new, let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. It's stuff we've done for years. Ever since I've been on this committee, there, there are items that we've discussed. I, I would say you probably should put this together, send it to Corbett, and, uh, who's not here, and, and say, right. make sure this is okay with them, and then we're, we just put on the, hopefully we'll have a quorum so we can vote on it in December. Right, I mean, if, if OSAC comes to Corey and I with a work plan and we look at it and, and we have a discussion with their chair and vice chair and, and if there's anything we can work out that might cause us to change this between now and December, we will. But otherwise, I think this is largely what we'll be looking at in December. There won't be any further changes. Right. Okay, so moving on to pickleball. Um, so I wasn't here. Patrick wasn't here. My so my initial understanding when I, with those that I talk, those on the board that I talked to was when they put it on their, um, in their budget, they wanted ProStack to quickly turn around a, a recommendation on specific location of pickleball, where pickleball courts could go. I put together the slide presentation that had a half dozen or so locations. Uh, my, my understanding, unfortunately, I, I don't think there was a recording of the meeting, right? So I didn't get to watch it. Um, was that you also discussed Autry Park and um, and Wildflower Park, both of which I actually omitted for specific reasons, but which we can talk about. Um, but otherwise, you basically just recommended to put forward the locations that I had recommended on the slide presentation minus Children's Park. I understand that it that we can't really narrow it down without public engagement to one location. I'm not suggesting we do that, but I think there's a middle ground here where maybe we actually identify like three locations that we think are ideal for, for pickleball. So the board has a little bit more specific idea when they're looking at the budget um, item as to whether there really is a location for them to consider putting pickleball. If we'd give them eight, nine places, I, yeah. I don't think that's a very good point for, for them to start because I think there are places on that list that we could just check off. I think, I think we said in a speed, expedient manner, we said yes, there are places to put pickleball courts. If you want us to continue to explore the pickleball courts, we will take more in-depth analysis of the locations and solidify three locations because okay. we were all new to it and going, well, is it just that they want to know, yes, you can put it somewhere? That way they approve a budget item when we say, yes, we can find a location because we have lots of locations that potentially work, but each of them have a plus and minus to them. Mm -hmm. And there's a pros and cons list of this is too close to houses, this is not 
close enough to parking, you know, whatever it is, there's too much infill, there's not enough, how big is it, how many do we need? You know, so it was all those kind of things and, you know, just, I mean, even that one, I go by there every day now and look at it and go, it's the same three cars parked there and you're like, you can easily fit a couple pickleball courts up there once you look at it. Right. So, I mean, if we wanna, I don't know if we wanna just run through these again really quick. We don't have to have a huge discussion on it since you already did discuss most of them or all of them. Um, we would like to know your input though. Well, then we want to run through it just I also wasn't here. Don't worry, you're not here. Yeah. Last meeting, was right? Yeah. I was, yeah, I was pretty oh, sad right. that night. You didn't want me here. <laughs> so I guess let's just, well, all right. Let, let me just speak to Autry and Wildflower real quick. So the reason why I didn't include Autry and Wildflower in this discussion was Wildflower is, is freshly done still. I mean, it was only completed a, a year ago. At the time, we basically said that the, the buffer zone that was left between on the west side of the, of the park, between the back of the opal houses and essentially like where the, the basketball court is, that was intentional as to create some space between the homeowners, the residents there, and the park. For us to, a year later, go in and say, yeah, we recommend you put a, a pickleball court, which we know has noise complaints, in that location just didn't seem like a feasible fight to, to have. And so that's the reason why I didn't put it there. Autry, the location that, that's, that's kind of right to the east of the bike park, we've already talked about whether or not the bike park could expand. We're, we have this question of whether the, the disc golf course is, is gonna stay or is it gonna go. So it seemed like too, uh, a property that's in too much of like a limbo right now for us to definitively say, this is the amenity we wanna put there. It seems like it needs a bigger discussion of, well, if, if the disc golf is gonna go, well, what are we gonna use this property for? That could be, very easily become a lot more than just like a pickleball court. That could be a whole new set of tennis courts or something else there. It could be an expansion of the bike park. It could be a number of things. So those are the reason why I left those off. Um, this one, you know, this whole parking lot is on town property. Mm -hmm. So this is flat, this is relatively flat. You could put courts in there <coughs> without doing it. <coughs> if the town decided, no, we don't want to touch the parking lot, then you're really looking at this, which yeah. is a, would be an infill. At that point, you're probably talking about too expensive to consider. So I can see the, the negatives against that property. I can also see the positives in that we didn't really know it was there for us. So even if you cut that parking lot in half, put a court in here you could say well then you have parking that could be used by the school and or the courts and you're getting you're getting usage out of a piece of property that we would we never really considered before and that there's very few other uses that you could get out of it um, and then it's also relatively close to the tennis courts in the pool so it's like well you kind of have it's kind of being added to a complex that already exists. I mean, not exactly, but you know, in a ways it is. Um, and it also has a pretty minimal um, resident uh, impact because you have, you know, like a house here that would be in fairly close proximity, but really nothing else. I mean, you have any houses here, you have a street, they're next to a school anyway. That's the other thing is they're all next to a school anyway. They're already next to a noise generating amenity. So, it, 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 you, you would have, I think, relatively little resident complaint. Does anyone else have any strong opinions one way or another on, on this one? I, I don't like the location of it. I don't, I don't, it's sitting by the two streets, sitting by the school, um, taking that parking lot away from the school. Those are the three things that just pop 
straight to my head that not a good opportunity there. Right. And I think in order to truly do it there, you're going to have to fill that in. There's no way you're just I, I, I did walk it after the last meeting. I went over there, parked there, got out of my car. Fair amount of work. Yes, it is flat, <clears throat> but um, you're going to have to fill that hole in. And I just, you know, the, the negatives there for me were, were too much to even consider. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the touchy nature of the parking lot and the infill, I would see the reason why to check it off the list. Yep. Um, Plus, it is close to the road. Very close. You'd, have to, you'd have to button up to the road and the sidewalk. Um, so, I mean, I don't think it's like a tennis ball flying over the place. But, so. Well, and, and just for uh, clarification, yeah, I, mean, I mean, it, it would have a fence around it. Yeah. Kind of like a fence, right? Closed right. tennis court. Yeah, it, I envision it looking like the four courts. Right. And I can't imagine that ball can fly too far. Yeah. I've never played it, but I mean, it's like basically a wiffle ball, right? So mm -hmm. it can. A little bit it, heavier. I, I, yeah. I'm sure it can't fly more than like 50 feet or something, even if you whacked it pretty hard. All right, South Pool, oh, grass area here. So those of you who are not so familiar with it. This half right here is soggy like all the time. Like all the time. And so it's all relatively level though. So even if people use it, they're using this part of it. No one re I've never seen anyone really use this part. So you could build courts here assuming that given the drainage and everything, it's, I mean, mm -hmm. you can safely build courts on it. But if you could build courts there and still leave this half with grass for people to use, for just pick up soccer or, you know, setting up a, a volleyball net or whatever, like just a grass area. It has dedicated parking. Again, relatively little resident impact because you only have a couple of houses here that even border there. It's already generating noise again because it's a pool. It, it, I mean, granted, it's only a few months out of the year, but it's not like it, it, the people that live there are already used to noise to an extent. The skate park is on the other side of it. And then the concern of the grass, like I said, you'd probably only use half of it anyway. But now that you have Wildflower Park literally like right here with a big great lawn, you kind of have to say, well, you do you really need to have like that large grass area for that the type of pickup um, usage when you have one two blocks away next to the school so um, I think this is actually if I had to pick three this would be one of them the district old district master plan actually used to have tennis court right there <laughs> or it, sh it showed it at one point Anyone else have any real pros or cons on? It was, it was definitely on our list of finalists. Yeah, I think it's a good location. Yeah. yeah. So this one, well, like the only, the only downside to that is if you wanted to make a bigger skate park there, that would be the side you put it on. Because you're limited on what you can do on where this current skate park is. That would be the only, yeah. again, that's, that's irrelevant because it's probably never going to happen. I wouldn't see it. Even if we wanted to do a bigger skate park, I would definitely see a resident impact yeah. from that. Because well, I, probably, I don't think you'd see any more than you would from a pickleball from court, especially if they put lights on the pickleball court. I, I don't so. think we're talking about lights on the pickleball. I mean, we could be specific in the recommendation regarding that, but I don't think anyone's talking about It's a daytime only lights. pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, that's that's been a typical. I think lights would be a tough sell. Lights, lights are only been on the tennis courts. There's there's not really any location we're talking about here where I can really see lights being an easy sell. So either way, it's a daytime pickleball court or a daytime skateboard court. Same thing, same noise level, same yeah. activity level. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Rock Creek and Yarrow, this is the same situation as the as. The Superior Elementary location in that I don't think we've ever considered it you know I, we've never really looked at it as town property we've never really considered it for anything so this whole piece right there is 
you know, only this edge along the road is landscaped. Everything else is native grass um, and doesn't get used for anything. So there's already been talk with the with the board doing as a, a street project to take out White Raven. So that I would I would say, well, if you were going to do that, then you could just kind of take out just two thirds of it, Maybe create a little a parking, parking lot. lot. And then this piece, like kind of right up here, is all pretty level. This is all sloping down. This is all pretty level right here. I don't think it would take a lot of work to get, you're not gonna get more than probably a, like a two court little mm -hmm. thing up there. You're not gonna get a whole complex of courts up there. It's, it's definitely not any bigger than like a tennis court, I would say. So a, a tennis court would fit like two pickleball courts, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Yep. So I think you could get like a little two court thing in there. And other than this one house right here, this is all Broomfield residents in these apartments. Honestly, that's who's probably parking on White Raven. Uh -huh. um, and so you don't really have any resident impact and not superior resident as far as noise is concerned. Um, Plus their apartments, so there's like a different... Well, right. You know. it, like, are yeah. they really going to complain? If anything, they're like, hey, I got a pickleball court in my backyard. Yeah. It's wonderful. Um, so, like, I don't know if they have any tennis courts in there. I walked through this, and it was a maze trying to get through it. It was ridiculous. Um, I didn't realize how enormous that apartment complex so if again, if I add the creative top three, this would probably be my second one would be this spot because I, again, it's a piece of property that really couldn't take anything else, so why not consider it for this? And this would be my third. So this little this area in here right now, it doesn't get used for anything. There's a passive end of the park. Um, it, it, it's not, you know, mowed for like field use or anything. So the, the only problem here is this is the one I think you're gonna have the, the resident <laughs> impact. It is original town. Again, <laughs> it's only like a couple residences, you know, like here, 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 because this is like the junkyard. Um, it's not really resident. Though. Well, if this is before it, they uh, built the other ones there, though. Well, right, but right. I mean, they're, they're more. No, I'm talking about these ones in the upper kind of right corner here. Oh, like it's these? before. Yeah, that's well, not showing those. They're not really bordering so much. I mean, they are a little bit, but anyway, if you put a court in the middle of this, you still have a fairly good buffer on the edge of the park, and then the road between the residences. I, I'm not saying it's not it's not going to be an uphill battle, but if you wanted to put a court inside of an existing park I mean the South Pool that's you know a, a, a complex of you know a skate park pool but if you wanted to put one inside if inside of a park larger park that has other amenities like the basketball and the field and stuff I think this is your opportunity it's also a possibility you could put a standalone tennis court in there too um, so this would be my third but I would think your probably hardest sell would be founders it would be the hardest sell but it would be the cheapest option yeah right. but would it serve the most people I and mean, it's like no idea yeah. well i mean it's you just have to look at anywhere in town is serving all town residents in this case you, you already you already have parking there you, you already, already have, have park parking there. you you have you know yeah. you it's have flat it's already flat so I mean, well i yeah. guess i just mean like are people from rock creek going to come to you know i don't know it, it's, yeah. I, I think yes. Yeah, I think yes. I mean, because it's right now you have the same thing with the tennis courts. Is you say, well, if you want to use tennis courts, people from Original Town and Sagamore and everything, they have to go into Rock Creek to use the tennis courts or to use the pools. So this is just a reverse of that. Yeah. Um, just. I if the numbers are right that people are saying, I mean, I don't see it. But if there's people, like Patrick's explaining to me about how many people use it over an impact. Well, right, they're you basically driving they're going to go. down here. So right? I, yeah. Right now. And when you start talking about a minimal budget for next year, you're not going to 
completely revamp a road and put parking in or fill a hole or maybe change Well, the road, road would actually probably be, that, that's from the public works. That no, I mean, part but, of it would come from. But that would be part of the project, and I'm just saying this is the one area, and we talked about this, that you could put that right there, right now, all in right. these. It has right. parking, it has a restroom, you know, nearby. It, it's, again, if you're going to put it inside a fully developed park, Right. This is probably your one shot. And the downside to it's going to be the same argument as with Wildflower. We kind of promised them we wouldn't do it. This is a neighborhood park. It's not supposed to be an active, it's supposed to be a passive neighborhood park, not an active, you know, programmed park. So all of a sudden you're talking pickleball parks, you're talking, okay, how are we going to control it? Just like the tennis courts. Is it going to be just purely, hopefully, they're going to, everybody's going to play nice over there, or hmm. are we going to have to start programming it? So that was the downside to Founders is I think you'll get some pretty good, mm -hmm. once this goes public, if this is the place they decide to do it, you're gonna get, um, yeah. get some yeah. places. Yeah, I mean, if I actually had to prioritize my three, it would go one South Pool, two Rock Creek and Yarrow, three Founders. Founders would be, of the three, I would think is gonna be the hardest sell, though, like Ron's saying, probably actually the cheapest. It's probably the only one that would fit under the budget. It would be the cheapest. I think it's probably the harder sell. Um, but yeah, I think if I had to pick right now, my similar priority, I think. Yeah. But I think that's also why Autry Park came up because it, you've got not a lot of real work. I mean, you got work to do, obviously, but mm -hmm. you do have a flat area. You do have the parking already. All you have to do is build the courts next to the, to the bike area. Mm -hmm. And again, it was just, you know, kind of thrown on us so we just threw a couple eyes a couple ideas out there and I I think that's as viable an option as the other two are we <coughs> not concerned so. about rattlesnakes attacking the pickleball players uh, well, we are now. it's a paved court coyotes here. Only, <laughs> <joking>. only slides <laughs> coyotes here only slides. The slides. <laughs> they, I mean they were afraid of it on the slides, slides. so I, really? I'm just yeah. I'm just I'm really taking a jab here no, yeah, it's um, all right. you have a picture of that of Autry? No. No, it's no, not. No, it so. wasn't. Well, that came it, up with it last time. Yeah. Oh, okay. I like I said I left it off for the reason of I think Autry <laughs> is a little bit too in limbo with we don't know if the disc off is coming or go, or you know staying or going. Right. We don't know if we actually want to have a serious conversation of expanding the bike park because that's the other thing is if you build a court there then all of a sudden you lose any opportunity to expand the bike park. You've basically, you know, locked the bike yeah. park in because you, it's got the creek and uh, the road, and then you would have the court. So, right. Um, the one comment I would make on Autry Park and the disc golf um, at the first Friday, not the most recent one, but the f one before, Ray Crockett, who I think that's his name, who is actually um, chair of the Mile High Disc Golf Association, came and commented on the Autry Park course. And um, he said there were actually two issues with that course. The first one is that the um, tee pads are crusher fine. And the problem with crusher fine is it, it gets divots in it, you know, from where you tee off. So that is one reason that um, folks don't particularly like it. But he said the really big reason is that um, disc golfers um, really need to have obstacles in their course in order for it to be of interest. And because that course is wide open, hmm. um, you know, and there really aren't, you know, like the reason that they liked the concept of community park, not that I'm saying we should do it there or anything, because I'm not touching that one with a 10 foot pole again, <laughs> um, is that you could go back and forth over the creek. There are yeah. trees and bushes and things that you could play around and stuff like that so you know before we would invest anything in that disc golf course I think we'd really want to talk to some disc golfers and say hey is it is it really worth you know based on what he said you know you're probably not going to get a lot of people to draw to that park because of the fact that it's pretty much wide open space. it was very informative for me as a I don't play disc golf so um, you know he said you might want to think about investing anything in it until you've kind of, it's good to be able to shoot around a tree or over a lake. And that's why part of the reason that um, 
Purple Park was so attractive for the ladies event. Hmm. Well, that's good feedback because then Autry Park, it's really the, the limbo part of it is just the expanded bike. Well, but I still think you need to have that full disc golf discussion before you completely write off disc golf. Right. Like, you need to see, well, could we make improvements that would improve play, or is it just too much of a hurdle to scrap the course? Got it. Yeah. Like, but we haven't had that full discussion yet, and it, would we even have it in time for us to decide about pickleball location if it truly is pickleball truly is going to happen next year? I just that that's why I thought it was too much of a question mark for us to just flat out say okay yeah let's just start putting courts here this is our new court complex <laughs> we're gonna put you know like basketball courts and tennis courts and pickleball courts and just pave over the whole thing <laughs> I, that could very well happen in the future I just think that it's too premature to make that decision that makes sense Children's, we can just cross off. I'm assuming you thought yeah. it was too small and too close to homes. Correct. We still need to find our repurposed use. It's of on the list for next children's. year. It's been on the list for years. Oh, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I oh, think good. it's. I think it's actually the, a good location for community gardens. But. And the other option that I briefly brought up was the cheapest option, which is just turn the tennis courts into the pickleball courts, and you're done. And then put on the plan to build a real tennis complex in this town over on the Richmond 15. <coughs> yeah, but that one's got another question mark on it. So you can't just start building courts if you don't know whether they're going to build a rec center well, on it. Well, so, I understand that. Yeah, I understand. Um, so, or a skate park or whatever else you might want to put there. So. so I got another question then, if we're going to go off on tangents. Um, <laughs> what about the four courts that are at uh, El Dorado K-8? I know they're not ours, but there was supposed to be a discussion about yeah, utilization of. We we had that conversation. They don't want adults on school property anymore. Ever. 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 It's, yeah. I mean, it's. I just got to ask the question. Yeah. And I mean, it's a good question. We've it's a great question. About it and sorry if I get it. Comes sorry. Up, sorry. But it's, it's one of those. I mean, I, I go over there with my kids on the weekends, and yeah. they have the smallest basketball hoops in town, so, you know. <laughs> and what we ran into, you know, we had that vocal group that wanted them with Wildflower, and we, we proposed that as a solution. Right. And we got the feedback that they weren't interested in having adults on the property, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, said, well, you know, they'd likely be playing after school, and what we heard from Pickleball players is no, we'd actually be playing at nine or ten in the morning while the kids were out. So it ended up not okay. that's mm -hmm. yeah. So for we me. we when I actually very first started here eight nine years ago, <coughs> we participated in a grant to convert those courts over to quick start courts, and then quickly realized we weren't allowed to use them. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we did bring the topic of. We met with the Boulder Valley School District folks, uh, with their board. And I, I'm trying to remember the conversation. I don't have the notes here. But I swear I thought they said they were more open than they've been in the past. So I'll, I'll go back and look at my notes and see if I got any inform if I wrote down who it was, because they seemed like they were more open to some partnerships with us but I would on also some of the facilities. Have to wonder if that's a, a divide, a difference in opinion between the board and the actual district administration. Because from everything I've heard from I can Patrick, only tell you what the Boulder board. We met with the like board, and that's wall. what they said. And there were representatives of the staff there too. Okay, there were. Well, One of whom is the current superintendent of schools. <laughs> the, the interim. Hmm. The, yeah. Well, and, and I just bring it up because, you know, you see the updates on the school construction over there, and I saw that they were re, re topping them, or they're supposed to be, or may, that may be delayed for a while now. I think till spring now. Till spring now. But the fact is that there's that one tennis court and four little pickleball type size courts over there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm, I, I assume that's the pickleball size. I mean, I don't know the exact dimensions, but they're about that. So, anyway. In, in the past, there's been discussions about the joint venture with the football. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, with the fields, the baseball, yeah. the football, right. and you know, so, all so that stuff. A lot. <laughs>
It yeah. would. I anyway, think it comes down to you know, you know, at least in the past, the deal breakers been they're more willing to let us pony the up the maintenance, <laughs> get it up, and then tend not to get the usage. Right. Well, and considering you're saying that the high usage is definitely during the school day, I mean, it's got to be off the school property anyway. And and honestly, going back to the uh, Superior Elementary, I mean, that's right in that kind of same wheelhouse then that they're kind of in the morning morning school time would be when those utilization would be. So anyway, yeah. I mean, I think those are, you know, three viable options. Yeah, were there any more or is that it? I can't remember. I think that's the last one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I would say we should make a recommendation to the board to narrow it down to to three, whether it's the same three I said or not, um, unless someone strongly disagrees with that. Well, but you, I just don't think you need to. I brought it up at the last meeting that you guys had basically identified seven to eight sites, and that we'd have to have public engagement on it. And I said. You know, does anybody feel like they need to have more information at this point in time? And nobody did. Because I just feel that so. if, if the board goes and looks at seven, eight sites, and we basically know that there's only really three that are strong candidates, why refer to seven or eight? Why not just refer to three? Well, and, and I'll, I'll just say that last meeting, I wasn't clear on whether or not it was it's definitely narrowed down or more the fact that yes we just know that there's sites in town and so we opened it up to all of the sites that we could think of because we talked about them all and just said here's the seven locations without narrowing it down if the board definitely wants to put money behind it and move forward because it's not one of our top priorities it's a number 10 on our list but if there's a funding for it and we can get that amenity We'll, we'll definitely refine and, and look at them. And I mean, since that meeting, I mean, I've gone out and checked out the, the one on Rock Creek there and, you know, in Yarrow, and mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, it's more viable than I thought when I first looked at it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even looking at the Indiana and El Dorado at the school, you know, so I think we've all had a chance to look at them a little bit more. It's just a question of, do we need to re refine it at this time? It's in the budget, the budget's not the theme of the night. Yeah. It's in the budget. I just not approved. I think, I think to Peter's point, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like there's three out there. If the board comes back and says, narrow it down, you've got to narrow it down. Got well, it. And, and at that point, we also have to start a public engagement process, and these are the ones that we want to publicly put out there. As right, and I'm not trying to leapfrog that. I, yeah. I, I realize, Wait, no, 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 I, yeah. Especially, but, especially but we don't want to do a public engagement process on seven sites. Exactly. Right. We're going why, to do because again, why draw forward. attention to sites that we can pretty much say there's a reason why this doesn't a clear reason why this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Or future planning that says, you know, there's some other better things that yeah. potentially may work there. Like Well, so I mean we can just leave it, I guess, as as you know, say that the discussion narrowed it down to three sites, but not actually make a recommendation. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is even though we have yeah. you know, seven or eight on the list, when we get to the point of public engagement, we can narrow it down to three or four, I think. Right. Okay. All right. Um, so, do you want me to say the three that we narrowed it down yeah. to? Yeah, I would specify. South Pool. South Pool. Um, Rock Creek Circle Rock Creek. and East Yarrow. And Founders. And then Founders. Founders. Yeah. And then, and then I mean, you can say in the discussion, further discussion of Autry may be appropriate depending on, you know, whether this golf is, is going to continue in that location. type it and then you can review it later yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so moving on okay. to updates um, the town budget largely referred to at this point but mm -hmm. it'll be approved at the end of the next meeting whatever that is right did you say 10 days seven. 10 days yeah um, Monday after Thanksgiving and that's like 
that's final approval, right? At that point, we will know what's in the budget for next year, or is there another meeting after that? that? If it's approved. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you're right. It's November 5th. <clears throat> It'll be voted on, is what you're saying. Great. 27th, they're going to vote on it. Doesn't, cool. doesn't mean it's going to pass. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They, they, they can always make changes. Right. Okay. The pros master plan, I put that on here, and we've largely discussed it, mainly to say, I, I think at the beginning of next year, we need to get a much stronger idea of if we're going to have a working group on it, actually lay out like a plan to tackle this thing, because otherwise it's just going to keep falling by the wayside. So um, we'll have to address, you know, whether or not we think it's viable for us to work on or if it really needs to go as a budget item for the following year to be worked on by a consultant. You know, if we are going to work on it, are we purely looking to just edit the existing master plan or do we want to start scrapping whole parts that we think just aren't relevant anymore, um, try to make it a little bit more of a manageable document? But uh, that's the reason why I have it on here is just to point out, like, we need to keep this, you know, on, on our minds to not let it just end up as the, uh, you know, the last item on the uh, <laughs> every agenda of, of the work plan, so. Well, I mean, we, you could you could almost to a certain extent say, okay, in the next whatever time frame, pick a time frame, we need to decide if we think we should do it or if we think we should, we, we're going to need to send it to the, to the back to the you guys and say we probably need to get a consultant yeah. to do this because it's way over our head. And it, yeah, and it sounds to me like it's way over our head, <laughs> and that we may need to at least tell them why it's way over our head, and then we, we just need on. to give an update on the whole thing and yeah. what it what it takes and what we think it really needs to be updated because I don't, I don't think and, and I think our and I think we should be moving well, in a path. Yeah. Right, we should be moving in a path to say, okay, you guys need to get some serious professionals on this. Rather, you know, I think you're not a professional, but <laughs> get get some help. Get some help. If I have 40 it, hours a week, I, I, I use it. it. I use the analogy of, of yard work all the time. <laughs> yard work is you can do it. It just takes time, and it's kind of expensive to get somebody to do it for you. But at the end of the day, you hire somebody, and they get it done in one day. That's kind of the comp, that's kind of the, the master plan. We could get this thing done, uh, but again, it's someone's got to come up with the money. Yeah. Uh, is it, and it would have to be something we would need to do early on to get into the 2019 scenario. Should I record budget. that? I'm going to hand that to my wife. <laughs> 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 yeah, watch those leaf blowers come by and they're gone in three hours and you're sitting there going, I've literally spent the last two weekends doing my yard work. So, yeah. That's great. I know the feeling. Yeah. Uh, tract H. Tract H. Uh, in, in all senses, has been done for a couple weeks other than some punch list items. You notice it's green now, so they we have them put down a ton of hydro mulch so that way nothing blows away. All that seed that we drill seeded, nothing blows away. Hmm. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much done. I'll do a little bit of cleanup on track day and, you know, hopefully we'll get them out of here. But, we, you know, we're in that tail end. We're, we're beating them up to make sure we're getting everything out of it. Cool. Um, so yeah, we're excited. That was a it was a interesting project to work on. It's the first time we've ever done a the eight inch reuse line uh, through a park or an open space doing a block. It's done, which is awesome. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And then Rocky Mountain Greenway, I mainly put this on here because OSAC is getting updated on it. I feel like we should be updated on it too, but Yeah, and I and I had to admit to Peter, um, I don't necessarily think it's staff who's doing the update, so let's be Sandy Pennington that I think is still really fairly involved in the Greenway, um, which is great. But, uh, you know, staff hasn't worked on it for quite some time. Um, I think the town's made their position fairly clear about, you know, not having the trail access through it and then any kind of trail that accesses the town. Um, Trustee Pennington did ask that we try to track down. There's some jurisdictions that are participating in a in a grant opportunity, if you guys kind of remember a year or so back. Uh, they, I think, as a group have issued an RFP for somebody to do some soil sampling. So we were asked to try to track that down. 
Um, we're still actively trying to figure out where that is. If, if, I, if we find it and you guys are interested in seeing what that RFP is, we can send it out. Um, I guess I should actually ask, does everyone know what this is? No. I can't remember. <laughs> you might not have been. The, the we just don't right into it, though. Been on the tree. So Rocky Mountain Sounds Greenway great. is is that the, <laughs> the idea that they would have this trail that goes all the way from Rocky Mountain Arsenal to Rocky Mountain National Park. It was oh. going to go through Rocky Flats. The, so there was, the, that was the point of contention was, so Superior chose not to participate mm -hmm. in putting forward, you know, a, a matching amount of money for this federal grant into funding the trail because it was going to go through Rocky Flats. Boulder, Westminster, Boulder, West Arvada, Arvada, they all voted yes, right? Correct, Broomfield. But, but at least Boulder had some, they kind of put some, you yeah. know, like an asterisk on it of like, you need to do more soil testing. Mm -hmm. um, or was it both soil and air testing? I think but, if I'm remembering it was soil and some other stuff, but I think it's yeah. really coming down to that soil and, test. And, but out of that, because there did seem to be this, you, you know, issue of, of going through Rocky Flats, they started to come up with the idea, well, what if we just kind of go around it? Yep. Mm, okay. And um, and so there was, I think, an alternative trail alignment that was basically going to go, you know, from Boulder through the open space to 128, then it was just going to kind of jut down along 128. It might have even hit the corner of, right at one point, wasn't even going to go through the corner of, of the our open space yeah, down there on the St. Francis on Trail, the one at McCaslin and 128, okay. mm -hmm. and then get along Indiana. You know, go so along Indiana. Involved. So basically, but, it's right there, so but that's yeah. the yeah. but no, that's the question. That's the reason why it's an updated uh, item. You know, is have has there been any change? It doesn't sound like there has been, but um, yeah, I mean, is it going to go through Rocky Flats or not, or is it even going to happen at all at this point? Because if they didn't get a certain amount of matching dollars, which I don't know if they actually got, they weren't going to get the federal grant, right? Yeah, but I don't remember if the project was contingent on the grant it or, wasn't or not. Okay. I think the grant was kind of a, hey, if we can get it, great. Um, but I, I mean, I think it was a fairly high priority project for some in the state because you were linking two Superfund sites together that had gone through some level of restoration. You were taking people who you know, on a trail from the Front Range to the National Park. That's pretty cool. Um, so, but you know, you had the whole contention of you're running it through two super fun sites. Mm. So, um, mm. but if if we get the updates, I'll by all means pass them on. It's just not a project that staff's been doing any work on. The date. And I assume everyone knows where Rocky Flats is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Heard something about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe back. <laughs> don't, don't take her around there. Yeah, we built it. Really? really? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been down 93 in a while. So. All right. Um, so final item is our December meeting date. Last month you had talked about moving it up a Wednesday, so it was going to be Wednesday, December 13th. Usually that's more of our kind of like holiday party. We have it. Mm -hmm. We've traditionally had it over at Old Chicago instead of like a Full meeting, meeting here, so we don't really have to have it on a Wednesday. Um, we could have it any day. So the we were wondering if um, everyone's okay with doing it Thursday, December fourteenth. I will not be here. I will be here on the thirteenth, but not the fourteenth. <laughs> I'm in Utah. Yeah, I have no randomly. Idea. <laughs> Think about commuting the thirteenth. I mean, it's Kansas up to you all. Cool. Well, so I guess show of hands, who can be here on the? 13th. Old days, I'm good. Okay, no and who can be here? I'm, I'm out on the 13th, you're oh. on the 14th. Who can be here on the Who's 14th? Who's your favorite every... No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Corey's been here longer. Okay. He wins. No, it's, it's, it's cool. Okay. Well, who can be here on the 14th? You should, you I'm pretty sure I can be here yeah. on the 14th. I can be here. All right. So it's, <laughs> I mean, can, it's, it's, it's one, 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 one way. I lost one way or the other. We've got well, other board members. Right. Or other so I'll ask, here. Yeah. I'll ask Susan and Corbett yeah. um, which one works for them, and we'll, we'll yeah, see. Or you can have it. Where are you going to have it? Probably at Chicago or personally. Me either. If I work here on the 14th, either. that's my works holiday party, which I'm also It just has to have a TV. <laughs> in Europa. Oh, they got yeah. TVs in Yeah, apparently. With football. 
Yeah. Well, if you do Thursday night, yeah. But I do have phone checked out as the 13th. <laughs> so, right. well, 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 I think it was in an email, so we'll I just assumed it was in an email. And I'm cool with whatever. We'll be on the comeback track. After the first quarter. Hey, so, close up we're going to be uh, going to Boulder High School looking for a quarterback, though. Yeah. Hopefully they got somebody. We can I've, got got a, got a good one. I've got a couple so of things. So That's all right. We'll yeah, take them. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was just going to say I went to the uh, Northwest sub area thing. Oh, really? So I don't know if anyone oh. else went to it. Yeah, I, went, oh. I was here. Right? I went to the he one. Went to the oh, one you went to the one there. I went to the one that was here. Pretty cool with the clickers. We got to click? get that for our next I step. liked that lady that ran ours. She was very good. She was, she was good. They it was very budget. different. The um, <laughs> the, vibe. the second night they did it was very different because they, you know, while we were done at like yeah. 15 minutes after it started. No. They actually. Um, we went over. Engaged, allowed yeah. the, the participants to speak. Oh, good. You know, after they'd put up um, data, then they'd say, does anybody have any comment? And she actually had to cut it. I mean, there were a few people who spoke a little a bit lot. more than, um, but it was, the, it was a packed house. It was the lively. Second one. Cool. Yeah. And the first one was packed, too. It was too. packed, too. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I was just curious if there was any feedback from it or anything. Nothing at this point, um, but I did. Um, to post stuff. They had a um, the, the online out. survey. They had um, almost 500, a little over 500 people That's great. respond to that survey. 460 online and 40 really were. Cool. Um, I didn't see that. Was that person? sent to all town residents or yeah. only to the Northwest? Nope. Area? It was there was a, a notice sent out to yeah. all town there residents. You just have to go on the website. Right? Right. Yeah, you just had to go on to the website. click through to the website. Yeah. It was on our website. You yeah. could do it. But I was most impressed with it. Those clickers, clickers were cool. Oh, those things yeah, were they, awfully you fun. Really use those you could do a simultaneous. Yeah, I was gonna say the next I'm time we got a four years old. Right? Yeah, I know. And you know, huh. Loris and great. Associates actually yeah. has has them now, yeah. and they're like, yeah. whatever you guys need. Yeah, yeah. Um, consulting firm. I can't remember the name of the woman, great. but my understanding is she's with Clarion and Associates, and she is was involved when we did some other planning ten years ago. I think it was. Um, Somebody mentioned that the same woman had helped us with another awesome. project, and um, she was, I have never seen anybody that knew as much about the town to not work for the town. Right. She was good. And so much she poise, too. She, I mean, they were kept really trying to you know, unseat her a bit, and she did really well. Yeah, she, yeah. she did a great job. was the was it, were they like, what was the direction? Because I didn't get a feel for a direction from the people who were ours. Well, because we didn't really have any questions right. at ours. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember. Um, it, you can go back and time. you can watch the video yeah, of the one of, that was here. Okay. Yeah. You know, the one obviously at the firehouse was not here. And it definitely is worth watching if you're interested. It's pretty um, entertaining, I you know, um, <laughs> and, and the interesting thing was <laughs> it, the one here was not just um, people in the northwest sub area. Yeah. I thought there would be, and it was about, I think it was like 20 or 25 percent were Rock Creek yeah. residents. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But and then everyone that lived in original town. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it was pretty much a lot of Coal Creek Crossing and original town, but mm -hmm. it was... Um, very, very is is well Coal done. Creek Crossing not considered original town now? Yeah. Well, I think when most people think of original street. town, they do yeah. not think of Coal Creek yeah. Crossing. Okay. They think of the original houses that were Coal here because it's a very different, yeah. different demographic yeah. Yeah. and the houses are much more expensive. <laughs> yeah. My favorite part was I said I wanted sidewalks and then Gladys said, as an original town resident from forever, we don't want sidewalks because it'll change the the look or the nature of original town and I was like yeah that's going to make it into a metropolis is the sidewalks is really yeah. going to really <laughs> it was great <laughs> uh, anyway hey, a uh, couple, couple quick updates on the 27th uh, during the work session I'm going to do a kind of a status update on where we are with the two indoor processes so the partnership processes yeah so this is the budget that's the work night. session. Yeah. Oh, oh it's a but work it's session. A okay, board so, meeting. Board, right? so board uh, meeting my session. guess is it'll probably even be a little bit earlier. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's 27. Um, I guess that's so the Monday following Thanksgiving. You know, we're still working on both processes in tandem, assuming that really there hasn't been you know much of a, a decision. Um, so it's probably not going to be anything 
really earth shattering, maybe some updated images, but the budget info is the same budget info that we've thrown out at previous meetings. I mean, we've done this indoor discussion so many times. I think it's just continuing to kind of narrow the info, you know, make it a little bit more digestible. One thing we are looking at doing is, um, you know, if you remember that the impact concept had four levels, but it was stair stepped back. Mm -hmm. We are looking at a, a option to square off the front of the building to optimize the square footage. And I, actually, I don't remember. Was that your? Might have actually been one of your guys' recommendations to instead of stair stepping it back and incurring that cost, right. it's actually cheaper to square off the front of the building and add more square footage, like on the second floor. Um, so we are looking at something like that. Um, so then the other update is, and this is going to lead into a bigger picture discussion on doing some committee trainings. You guys in May had, had made a recommendation to put some signage up on the tennis courts that said residents only, which I think is fine. And we're going to work towards that. Um, but when the committees make a recommendation and then even the committee runs that recommendation by the board, the, there isn't board consensus until four of them all raise their hand and vote on it. So staff has not been given direction to put any kind of signage up. We're going to because we've had to kind of have this dialogue of, okay, what happens when these committees make recommendations and then the board doesn't say anything about it? And if you guys notice, it happens quite a bit. Um, and it's not, it's, it's nobody's fault and it's, it's just kind of part of the process. Um, from staff, we want to make sure that everybody, you know, if we're going to put a sign up that says residents only, whether it's a swimming pool or a tennis court, I need to make sure that the board knows, okay, is the board's expectation that staff is going to go and monitor and check, okay, that discussion's off the board. You know, what, do we have a process in place to throw somebody off of the tennis courts? Do I get to call Sergeant Chamberlain if somebody from out of town is on our tennis courts? Um, so that's normally, this is gonna be a policy level change for us. You know, the tennis courts are funded out of the class two budget, which is sales tax, um, which we treat those largely like public facilities. We don't stop people from coming into the park. This one's a little bit different because there's only a finite number of them. Um, so we're gonna continue to explore throughout 2018, instituting a fee structure to use the tennis courts. Um, that way you could say, if you're a non-resident and you wanna use the tennis courts, maybe you can do that, but you're gonna pay us $70 an hour or something astronomical to use it. Um, so long story short, we're going to try to come up with some language to put on the sign. We may or may not have to run that language by our attorney because this is, a, this is a policy level change. You know, when the board voted to not allow non-residents to come into the swimming pool, I mean, we actually had to have a vote. Um, we'll try to get those signs up and then we'll kind of do our diligence throughout the year to make sure that our ducks are in a row because it's, like I said, I mean, one of the things we've talked about is changing potentially where the tennis courts are funded out of. You know, it should, is, if it's gonna be a more privatized facility, should it be coming out of a different pot of money than a sales tax? So those are some of those bigger picture kind of policies. But we recognize the need for it. We're gonna work on getting the signage up there. We've had the dialogue with the board. Um, but uh, our goal next year is to actually do a committee training because um, I think just, you know, the committees turn over so much and you guys get caught in these projects that go on for five or six years. You may not have kind of all the background and um, we notice it as staff, you guys will do the work. You'll sometimes, we'll capture it in the notes, you'll capture it in the minutes. Sometimes you even speak at public comment and there's still not a definitive, yeah, we like that idea. Well, and yeah. so I think that we kind of got this when we, I can't remember which issue it was. Maybe it was the first, it was the slide, and then it was um, rec center or something. But basically, we got to the conclusion that if we have an actionable 
recommendation, we have to ask for it to be put on the yeah, board agenda. Absolutely. And I would absolutely recommend that you do that. Yep. Right. Because if you put it in your notes, I'm sure they are read, but I am not sure that any board member, and as having been a trustee for a year now, I can tell you the biggest problem we have as a board is that I say something and I assume that it's going to be taken care of or Kevin says something and somebody says, oh, well, that's what we need to do. And just because one or two board members say it and you see some heads bobble, that doesn't mean we really made a decision on it. So, you know, my comment would be if, if you want to do it, um, ask the board, come to the board and ask for a decision on it because um, there's too much head shaking and and my head shaking one way so that would be my comment to um, you know there were several of us that thought the sign thing was resolved and then we actually had another meeting where we talked about the um, the fee structure for the the use of um, all of our facilities and whether we should look at fees and we have directed the parks and recreation staff to really look at the fee structure on every facility we have and to come up with a recommendation for what should happen with our fee structures and that could certainly tie in with should our facilities be a part of that would be are our facilities primarily for the residents of superior or do we charge a higher fee or you know what are the limitations if we want to start monitoring who uses a field or who uses a tennis court. So that's part of the work plan that we've, and that it was part of the budget discussions, yep. Yep. and we have directed staff to work on that. So I think that may help to address some of the issues with uh, facilities being used by other groups. But, but you are going to put the signs to begin with, or not? Or We're going to try to work on some language for a sign that's okay. legally okay. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. I could, staff has not been given direction to police any policy. Right. Nope. So if we put a yeah. sign up that says intended for resident use only, mm -hmm. we don't have a mechanism in place that if a non-resident is up there, to enforce it. To no. Enforce it. Yeah. no, but they have to say that it generally works uh, because those groups that get together on a Saturday morning, as a, they have, they just they just got used to do that, and, and, and I know that if they see the sign is residents only, they will stop going. And uh, for the record, <laughs> um, as far as uh, reinforcing, I don't know if it will always work or not. Um, I know my husband was very upset on one day that he went there, he, he, had, he was meeting someone to play a match, and he went at like 3.20 or something like that to play a match at 3.30 to court number four, which was supposed to be open. And there was someone there with a basket of balls. It was an instructor that was waiting for someone to teach a lesson at four. So he called me, I, uh, I called your office. Um, a lady in your office told, well, told me that now he had to leave because he wasn't allowed to teach the lesson. He, went, he didn't want to leave. My husband ended up calling that the the lady again in your office. She was like, "Oh no, he has to leave." And eventually, the guy left. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> if yeah. you're persistent, well, well, people end up leaving. But I'm curious. <laughs> when you say it's supposed to be open, there is no reservation schedule, is there? Mm -hmm. So there how do you know it was supposed to be open? Court well, court number four is. is you, or you just mean it's not supposed to be scheduled for lessons? Well, it wasn't even a schedule. I, I, I understand that if someone, if there's an instructor that is that hasn't ha, that doesn't have permission to teach a lesson, they cannot do so it. Yeah, okay. anyway, there's probably period. we've figured there's probably between five and seven private instructors that yeah. operate in town. Okay. And yeah. We run into this <laughs> issue because they offer services to a resident, so they're with the resident. I mean, it, it, it's... But yeah. the, the issue here is, is in private also. instructors. It, there's, there's nothing that guarantees you that if you were to go there at 3.30 on no. a Saturday that the court would be open. No. Someone else could be playing it's, on it. It's a lot like right. the Founders Park issues we run yeah. into. And, you know, it gets bad. We call the police and yeah. tell them. 
No, in this particular case, it was an instructor, and it says specifically that they need right. okay. permission to do it. So you can say, okay, <coughs> you need to leave. So. All right. Uh, me meeting adjourned. And the meeting is at, starts at 5.30 on the what? 27th. Oh, the work session. You can do it month by month over there. But they'll give you a free month unless you commit those years, right? No, I, I don't know. I don't I'm know how that works. I'm assuming they put that out because Lakeshore is going to be here. It's going to be reopening in January. So you oh, can I know. get you in there for a free month if you sign a year. Right? They're busting at the seams over there. Yeah, it seemed kind of weird to see that fly. We were over there on um, Saturday night watching the rough. Well, you're watching, but the rough ride was playing. So. Oh, the, uh, like that junior well, team? Well, that's that's not good.